The goal of this video is to explain what the state pattern is and how we can use it to implement state machines to control the behavior of objects in our games. By the way, this won't include any like complete implementations in code. So if you're looking for that, uh, this isn't the place to do it. This is to help you understand the pattern so you can think about how you would create the code yourself. The state pattern allows us to change the behavior of our objects in our games based on their internal state rather than resorting to deeply nested if else statements. You know what I mean. The state pattern honestly isn't as scary or complex as you might assume. In fact, it can be summed up with the following diagram. So first up, we have this state machine script. So the state machine script is attached to a game object and therefore we can use the update method on it. Inside the update method, we say current state dot handle. So current state is a variable that gets stored here on the state machine and it could either be an idle state or a walk state. But how could we treat two different types of things as one kind of variable? Well, that's what we use an interface for, or in this case, it will be an abstract class. Um, and don't worry if that confuses you, just think about this. By using an abstract class, we're saying that an idle state is a state and that a walk state is a state. And because the state abstract class or interface has this handle method here, it means that we also can use the handle methods on the walk state if we call anything that's a state. So when we actually declare this variable current state, we call it a state. And because this is an abstract class, it means it can't be this one because it's just an abstract idea. It's just a state. Therefore, it has to be one of these things that implement that interface. What I'm getting at is in this update method, when we call current state dot handle, what really happens is this. So what happens is in this update method, we go, okay, current state dot handle. Okay, so we go to the state first we see that there's no implementation of handle here. It's just a template. And therefore we'll go to whichever the child state is. So if it happens to be a walk state, then we'll go to the walk state. If it happens to be an idle state, we'll go to the idle state and then we'll call handle on that. Now, why does that matter? Why don't we call update on that? You might think, well, the idle state and the walk state and the state are not mono behaviors, okay? So they don't have access to update and we don't want them to have access to update either. Think about it this way. Our character doesn't wanna be standing still and walking at the same time. If he did, then these two things wouldn't need to be different states. They could just be part of the same state. But the fact is that he should only be able to do either idling or walking at any given time. So by having this handle update, it means that we can decide which one we're gonna actually run the code on depending on which state is in this variable. So if we're in idle state, the handle will be running here, but it won't be running over here in walk state and vice versa. This way we can ensure that the states never interfere with each other because we can always guarantee that only one will be active at any given time. But then how do we actually decide which state to switch between? Well, let me show you. So what we do is in the idle state inside the handle method, we say if input dot get key w state machine dot current state equals new walk state. Okay. And then that will change the current state. So it will change the state that's updating here in the handle and therefore the state will have switched onto a new one. Inside the walk state, we do a similar thing. We say, if we don't get the key W, then state machine.current state equals new idle state. 
An important side note here is that anything you'd usually do in the update method or fixed update, whatever on your game object script, you now want to do inside each state's handle method. Okay. You can even make a fixed handle method and call that from a fixed update. By the way, this is not exactly the implementation that I use in my own code. I do things in a bit more of an optimized way. For example, I don't create new states every time I switch between states, but this is just for the kind of easiest way to show you how it would work. So I was thinking about starting a coding challenge based on this video. So what I want you to do is try and create your own implementation of a state machine using this pattern that I've shown you. Uh, if you need help, you can message me on Discord and the Discord links in the description, by the way. And I'd be interested to see what you come up with. And then maybe on a live stream next week, I can go through some different people's projects and say how I thought they implemented it well or what could be done differently. So yeah, look forward to that. Uh, that's all for the video though. So I hoped you learned a little bit and I'll speak to you next time. Bye.